Hello and welcome to the Spatial Structures Movers and Shakers interview series as we look ahead to the ISS Annual Symposium and Spatial Structures Conference organised by the University of Surrey and taking place virtually in August 2021. My name is Mark Richardson and today I'm joined by Jerome Kunders, who is the founder and CEO of White Lioness Technologies. Jerome was the organiser of the ISS 2015 Symposium and was previously an associate at Arup and assistant professor at Delft University of Technology, where he also completed his PhD. Jerome, thanks very much for taking the time to speak to us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a real pleasure, Jerome, to have you on the Movers and Shakers interview series. Um, as ever, we start by asking our guests about the period of lockdown. How has that been for you in the Netherlands? Ooh, scary period, of course. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, uh, as you can see, I, I work from my attic at the moment. So uh, uh, we, we, we do work in the office sometimes, but uh, yeah, already for about, I guess, one and a half years, we have been, uh, been working from, from home uh, mostly as an, uh, of course, as an IT company, this, um, this, this is, is very easy. Um, yeah, it's, it's, of course, also a sad period, right? So uh, you miss your friends. I especially miss my IASS friends. Uh, I would love to see them uh, all, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, I, I hardly get to, to see them. And if, if I see them, I only see them virtually. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's hard about this. Yeah. On the other hand, working on my health, I'm healthy. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. And actually, for us, it has been quite a successful period. So um, actually, uh, for some reason, uh, my company grew uh, quite massively during uh, during the COVID crisis. Uh, we 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 almost doubled in size. So um, yeah, for us, that has been a, a big surprise. Actually, we we thought that that would, wouldn't be the case, but um, yeah, it turned out that it was uh, actually a, a pretty successful period. Well, great, thanks, for that Jerome. And um, building on on. Um your company and learning a bit more about it. You are, as you mentioned, uh, as we mentioned, the founder and CEO of White Lioness Technologies. Could you tell us a bit more about the, the organization? Yeah, actually, I, 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 should, I should say that I'm actually one of the two founders of, of White Lioness. So uh, I think a lot of people in the ISS also know Anke Rolfing, my, my co-founder. So I think we have been both in uh, at a lot of the a lot of conferences uh, together. So uh, so we we have uh, we yeah we have founded uh, White Lioness uh, about uh, eight years ago after we uh, we left uh, Arab. Um, yeah, it's it's an IT company and we built a, a platform uh, called uh, Packment IO. Um, yeah, it's it's um, it's something I will tell you a little bit more about uh, later, I guess. But uh, I think what you you should remember at the moment is that we're trying to put parametric. Uh, design on the cloud, but also to build an ecosystem uh, uh, around this, an ecosystem of people and of companies. And um, yeah, that is going quite well. Um, I think what you, the other thing that I think is nice to know about White Lioness is, is people always ask, uh, you know, why why the, the White Lioness, right? So, so and, uh, and I guess that uh, I, I, well, there's, of course, many stories about why, but I think one aspect is that we, uh, it's a female animal, right? So, and we, we, we particularly chose this this animal um, because also we're, we're kind of like very much an inclusive company. So actually we're a tech company, but we actually have more than 50% uh, women. And uh, we also have more than 50% uh, people who are uh, not from the Netherlands. So we're really proud of that. Uh, it's not deliberate, but it's uh, we're really proud that we're such an, uh, kind of a, an, uh, an attractive place for, for all these bright people to work. And actually we think it's also a little bit of our secrets that of course, you know, we uh, we get all the uh, the other the, the really bright people. Uh, we 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 handpick them, and it turns out to be that uh, yeah, um, th those are of course uh, a mix of all the people, right? <laughs> Excellent. No, we we um, love hearing about examples of diversity such as that. So it's uh, really fantastic to hear um, in your organisation, Jerome. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I guess we're also interested to learn more about. Um, uh, projects that um, you know, perhaps yourself or White Lioness have been involved in. Are there any particularly memorable projects or projects that have stood out for you um, with respect to your company? Yeah, of course. It's it's asking, uh, you know, like what 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 of your babies do you love? Who of your babies <laughs> do you love the most? Right. <laughs> so that's really difficult. I, we really, you know, we have such a diverse 
mix of, of clients and partners that I, I cannot really uh, name a particular one. Um, yeah, of course, we, by the way, we're not really, you know, like, uh, you know, I used to be a structural engineer, but now I'm really into, into software. So we collaborate actually with a lot of engineers and architects, uh, contractors, factories, uh, but also completely outside, uh, you know, the construction. So we also work in, in retail, doing eyewear. Um, and, you know, everything re revolves around the software. But I, I do like, you know, there, there's a few memorable ones, let's say. So maybe to mention just two, um, and, and I will name just like a really big one. So we're actually working with one of the major five contractors in, in the Netherlands where we're generating full buildings. Uh, so I find this really exciting because it's large scale, but it's also really trying to transform uh, our industry and really yeah, maybe fix some of the, 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 the problems that our industry has. But on the other hand, we're also working with like uh, uh, two man, uh, you know, like carpenters uh, who, who builds house extensions. And uh, actually, I also really love working with those guys because they have really the agility to move. And if they believe in something, they will do it. Right. So in, in a lot of other companies, there's, of course, a lot of decision making going on. But with these small, small companies, they do it and they're really successful with it. So, and um, yeah, that of course I always uh, also really love, right? It's that is that is really nice. No, that's great to hear. Business of uh, of all sizes and scales, Jerain. That's uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Thanks very much for sharing that. So we'll we'll now move to the uh, the middle section of our interview, Jerome, which uh, is entitled "Your Space, Your Structure." So I will hand over the presentation to Jerome, who'll be. Um, presenting uh, for 10 to 15 minutes or so on a uh, spatial structures topic of personal interest, personal interest rather to him. So over to you, Jerome. Okay, great, uh, thanks. I, I will, um, yeah, I will try to show you a little bit about what we're doing with uh, with White Linus Technologies and our, our platform uh, Packant.io. It's of course really short, but uh, I'm just going to take you uh, along a little bit in, uh, in, in our world. So I hope that this will be working. So maybe to just show uh, you know, what we're really proud of. So this is actually about half of the company, but that, what I just told you, this is what, uh, uh, you, uh, you know, what, what our company looks like. Uh, and actually you might recognize uh, quite a lot of people who also visited uh, you know, the ISS conferences in the past uh, because we, 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 uh, we, yeah, we're, we're really involved with, with some of these communities. You know, as some of you uh, might know me, uh, in 2015, uh, we, we, we actually visited this building when, when a lot of you were in the Netherlands, but I've been responsible at Arab for a lot of, uh, you know, like um, um, special buildings where, you know, like computation, as we call it now, or software was involved to kind of try to generate these types of, uh, of, well, of shapes, but also make the engineering poss possible. So this is, for instance, uh, Arnhem Station. Um, to about 20 years ago, I actually started generating uh, buildings. So uh, this is actually the tallest T3 tower in the world. And as you can see, this is also a little bit of an old uh, image, but this is where, for me, uh, you know, programming and generating buildings uh, started. And um, yeah, and these days you would call it, let's say, parametric design, but of course, Parametric design has also evolved, right? And so originally in, in, it started out 20 years ago when we were actually kind of programming a building using textual uh, code and, um, you know, and then running analysis and generating the building and generating BIM models and these kind of things. But these days, and I, I guess that this is uh, that many of you are aware, is that there is now this next generation of parametric design, which is visual programming. So you might recognize uh, Grasshopper here, which is one of the, the visual programming languages. But um, we, uh, you know, there's also Dynamo and there's also a few, few others. And I think one of the things that um, is interesting to know is that we actually, in everything you will see in the next slides, actually under the hood of these, these models, of these systems, actually, this, gra this grasshopper lives, right? So visual programming lives, because we really believe that you know, this is the way that architects and engineers can actually develop their own logic and their own you know, automation logic to, uh, you know, to, to automate tasks uh, or you know, to do designs, but without actually having to hire programmers because you know, in the future programmers will be scarce. Uh, but also it doesn't really make sense, right? Because when I was actually programming this tower, you know, it took me months to actually generate proper code. While actually, if you now do it in a, in a grasshopper model, it, it, it takes you a few hours. So I just want to show you one of our, our clients and it's actually 
not on the scale of a building yet, but I, I think this is one of the nice, nice examples. But because what they do is they really fulfill this, this, this vision of file to factory. And you know, uh, you know, it's not a really kind of like a spatial structure, but you know, it's 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 a building product. But I think uh, you can easily see that this could also just as well apply to to spatial structures. Um, so actually, this is uh, they're called e stairs. They're a Dutch uh, company. They fabricate. A, a stair system, and it's a fully parametric stair, stair system. So, um, uh, whatever your your void looks like, and what the height is of your your ceiling to to ceiling height, let's say, and you know um, whatever the situation of your how your walls are located, uh, you know the actually the staircase ad adapts to this, right? And so I just want to show you um, the, their website. And actually, it's it's a pretty uh, special uh, website because, or maybe it's I should say it's it's a special uh, case because, um, yeah, usually most people don't think about you know going to a website to actually buy a building product, right? You go to a contractor, you go to an architect, but in this case, you actually. So Easter thought, well, what if we could, you know, sell website, uh, uh, you know, like uh, staircases on a on a website, and and again, what you see here is not a static image; it's actually a life generating parametric model, and Grasshopper is underneath, right? So, but we put it in a web browser, so you uh, you don't see the Grasshopper model running; you actually see this this web configurator, as as we call it. And you can play around with it so you can, well, you know, you can put walls in a different way, but also it gives you checks. So what the model actually does, it checks if the, the staircase is technically uh, correct. So in this case, uh, actually, if you now walk up the staircase, you will bump your head, right? So it actually warns you, you shouldn't do that. Turn the staircase around. So it gives you instructions about how to kind of properly design the staircase or configure it. Um, you might think, okay, well, you know, why shouldn't we just do this with, with, with a few images? Well, it's actually because Easters has so many different combinations of colors and options. But actually, later on, you also see dimensions. Uh, I will just first uh, create a Ferrari red uh, staircase here, um, and you know, you now could actually see some of so. In, for instance, in in the UK, these these riser bars are uh, obligatory. In the Netherlands, they're not, so we can take them off. This is all kind of simple stuff, but there's so many combinations in this in this staircase that uh, actually an infinite one, um, amount. Because I can really say, well, my staircase has you know an, a really particular height, right? And maybe I need a, a really particular depth, right? And actually, I can even set some advanced dimensions. I I'm not doing that now. Um, but what you will see is now it kind of has generated this perfect staircase with the perfect walking line and everything because there's quite a lot of geometrical trickery going on here. And it has generated this perfect 3D, 3D staircase, right? And you, can, you can, can view it. But so it's not what people call a sales configurator. So yeah, of course, obviously you sell the staircase with it, but it is, it is it's actually a configurator that does technical checks as, as well in the background. So it's impossible to create, let's say an impossible staircase. Uh, well, of course you can order it. I will not do it because it will make me poor, but um, then um, uh, the next step is that you could, for instance, download the BIM model and actually uh, download the IFC and integrate it into your, in, into a Revit or uh, environment or something like that of your design. So actually, this is a way that factories can bring their um, logic of what the product needs to be and technically will function to the architects, to or even to clients, right, to just customers. So um, this is, I think, rather uh, a new uh, trend. So I'm showing you, by the way, some of the, the things here. So this is, for instance, the, the BIM output. Uh, but then also you can do all kinds of nice sales trickery. So you can actually on your phone actually use augmented reality to, to preview it. Uh, by the way, this is my kitchen uh, and then you can see it. In. But I think the nice thing here is, is because we have generated this perfect staircase, we can also technically correct staircase also, we can generate all the production data. So we, we basically one to one have like a file to factory, you know, it, the, the, this, these drawings actually feed into the steel cutting machines they, um, and they feed into all the, the other systems uh, for the bending of the steel, et cetera. So you get this kind of uh, perfectly fabricated uh, staircase. 
But I think, so that's one aspect. And I think for many years, I think we have been discussing this at the IESS, you know, like file to factory and, you know, um, and direct production from design. And, and I think now with at least building products, this is in our view happening more and more. And, you know, this is more traditional steel construction, but we do this also with 3D printing and, and, and other types of, uh, you know, um, fabrication. Um, but I think what is even nicer is that we actually put the factory in a model, right? So what the factory can build or so what they technically can produce, you actually give to the architect, you give to, and, and therefore it's guaranteed that this is a functioning product. And I think this is really important to, to note. The next step that we are making now at the moment um, is that we are now actually taking this to the level of building. So, um, but there's a little bit of a specialty there because on the level of buildings, uh, you have all these different components, right? Like the core, the facade, the floors, the outer structure, I don't know, you know, installations. Actually, those are all products. You could all, you know, put them inside mini parametric models and together they can form, you know, like a building. Um, but the only thing is if you ever try this to put this into like a grasshopper model or something, it will actually, well, I always just say, you know, like your, your computer starts smoking because it's so, so heavy. So actually what we're now doing, and that's where we're using the cloud actually. So, uh, you know, and kind of an infinite amount of compute power to actually put all those models together and compile them into like a single model and um, yeah, actually use them on the web. And uh, so because we have a lot more power than just in your in your grasshopper. So this is where we're going with, you know, this idea of, you know, generating products, but, uh, and therefore generating buildings, but also we're using this to actually provide services to each other. So calculations, so we could also, you know, have a, a kind of concrete calculation as a derivative. Each of these services and products you can think of that they're almost like apps. And so the second thing about Packhunt, our platform, is that it is actually an app store. It is an, a kind of a, uh, an app store where, you know, it's not, you know, like your iPhone apps, but actually we allow people to share their, um, you know, their, their, their pieces of logic, you know, like, like their calculations, but also their products, et cetera, and actually get paid for it. Well, you can offer, also offer it for free, of course, but you can also get in a digital way, get paid for it. And I think this is really new. Um, so I'm just showing in the final minutes, I'm, I'm just showing you a couple of, of uh, short examples here of stuff that we're building and also what might be of interest uh, to this community. I know that for instance, that there is a lot of uh, 3D concrete printing these days going on also in, in the IESS community. So one of the things that we uh, actually released with uh, with a couple of collaborators, and I really want to know them and uh, to 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 note them. So uh, one is actually Vertigo, which is actually the, the concrete printing company. We have a lot of um, knowledge in yeah, you know how to print proper concrete. And then then there's a high, um, uh, uh, an applied sciences university in the Netherlands called Saxion, which actually uh, build a lot of the the product models and did a lot of the research, but. Um, we actually launched this website, uh, it's called slicerxl.com, which is a, a free tool which you can actually use to kind of upload your, your model, in this case, the cylinder, and then actually um, kind of uh, put some, um, some transformations on it. And then you either select kind of like a certain robot, and then you can actually generate the slices for your robot. So actually, so uh, as you might see that, uh, the robot isn't drawn, but it's it's um, you know it's actually standing over here, and so you can actually see what the the print bed of the the robot actually looks like. Um, and in the end uh, of this of this model, I'm moving this around a little bit too much, but you can actually here actually get the coordinates of all your printing. And actually, for people know and who work with robots, this is something you actually can turn into uh, robot code in the end. So this is. Um, like say our way of kind of like also sharing back together with these companies to, you know, and our collaborators to, to, to try to kind of share back a little bit of this knowledge uh, and actually share back the platform actually to, to show also what you can do with between, let's say, a, an online system, which, you know, allows you to configure things or actually also process data uh, based on parametric models, but also um, 
you know, like, um, um, yeah, you know, can straight away, you know, tie this to, to fabrication. So that's something for you guys to play around with. Um, I have two other things that I want to show you. So what we're also, I showed you an example where we actually are generating buildings. Um, and, and of course, I showed you the building products as well. But this now also we can start playing uh, with on, a, on an urban scale. Some people actually might recognize that this is actually a grasshopper model. But uh, you will believe me that, you know, this can also run on, you know, like on a, on a cloud infrastructure where, you know, we, we can straight away, you know, kind of try to, uh, to, you know, do urban design and actually take parametrics to an urban design level. And this is, of course, of extreme interest of, you know, of property developers, et cetera. Final thing is we started out, I think, the interview with COVID, and um, I didn't know this, but, but we, I, I put something in here by coincidence. The other thing is that, you know, I've show, been showing you a lot of construction examples, and uh, but actually one of the things that I like is in really in the beginning of the, um, of the COVID crisis, this picture struck me that like this is a nurse from Italy, really in the, in the trenches, you know, like of the, the first wave of Corona in, in, um, in Italy. And actually her face is completely bruised by the safety goggles that she had to wear. So um, actually we, uh, we have some knowledge in designing perfect fitting um, eyewear, so uh, based on facial scans. So what we also uh, did at the time is that we actually used our kind of parametric knowledge to, to um, build a kind of protective seal between, you know, any face. So, and, and pr any protective glasses that, uh, that of course would fit your face, but um, so that actually you get, uh, don't get the virus in your, in, in your eye zone, let's say. Um, and it actually prevents the the, bru the bruising, right? So because it perfectly fits and aligns with with your with your face scan. So this is also something you can use, you know, parametric design and these type of systems for. But I want to conclude with one final thought, and I think this is the most important thing that if, if there's one thing of my presentation that you should remember, is is I think this thought, right? So. You know, what if we could put all the, the knowledge, right, and all the logic that, you know, we have as humanity in our heads, but I especially addressing a lot of you people in, in the ISS, you know, I think there's so much knowledge that every year gets uh, disseminated at the conference. So for, for so many years already, we are, you know, we're, we're sharing a lot of knowledge between each other. But what if we could somehow automate those pieces of knowledge so that they do, they do not only the, the knowledge is not only in papers right but we could actually do something with it you know companies or institutes or governments or something could directly use your knowledge you know we have so much you know right right really people working in you know like parametrics optimization um you know all the types of spatial uh, structures all the materials what if we could put all that knowledge, you know, at the fingertips of, of other people? What could happen, you know, to the world? And I really am a strong believer that if we can, if we can do this, um, you know, we, we can really make the world a better place. So um, this is like my final thought that I want to leave you with. And please start thinking about this, right? Please start thinking about in the future kind of um, exposing your knowledge to, uh, to others and preferably in this digital way, because I guess that that will kind of make the, bay, the, the world a little bit of a better place. Jerome, thanks very much for taking us through your presentation there. Uh, very much enjoyed and uh, a very interesting insight into the, um, the meeting point, I suppose, if you will, of uh, software architecture and engineering. Um, yeah, really interesting insight into your area of expertise. So thank you very much for taking us through that. Um, we're now going to move to the final section of our interview, which uh, looks to the future of spatial structures and uh, in particular the 2021 conference. Now, a key theme of the 2021 conference, Jerome, is inspiring the next generation. I wonder what advice you would offer to aspiring engineers or architects or further afield looking to enter the field of spatial structures. Yeah, of course, um, I, I hinted on this, I think, I guess, at my last slide already a little bit, but maybe I will, I will elaborate a little bit further, you know, like, I, I would really say, you know, like, um, 
the, the world is going to change, right? I think the dig digital technology is changing our, our, our lives. You know, we, we can automate a lot of the things that we used to need to do by hand. And, and these days, I think we can automate them. And I know that still a lot of people say, you know, like, oh, that's not possible. Um, you know, I'm a believer that, you know, if it's, you know, if it's technically possible, then people will do it. It might not, you know, I'm not saying that it is almost the right thing, but it will happen, right? Um, and so I think what we should do as a kind of an industry is actually try to, to deal with that, right? And to, to, to actually find out our, our new role. And I think what's exciting there is that, that I do see a few new roles emerging. So one is, of course, we can be the maintainers and builders of new knowledge, you know, the inventors. So I would say, you know, young people should skill themselves actually in inventing stuff, right? And actually, and then turning it into something digital. Um, and I think the second rule is that also what's becoming more important is of course that computers can take away a lot of the automated work, but not human relationships. So I think also there human relationships are super important to, you know, well, to kind of skill yourself in, right? To, to develop your, your skills. Um, so, uh, because that's something that computers cannot easily, easily re replace. You know, I know that there's kind of chat bots out there, but you know, you still know that you're not that you're not talking to to a human, right? So, so I I think those two that that gives me also a lot of hope. You know, very often people ask me, you know, like, are we going to be replaced by robots? No, I, I don't think so. Not not yet. But but and I I had I certainly don't hope so. But I think we if we skill ourselves and we keep developing, then then there's also a place for for humans. So especially young people should. You know, I guess, um, yeah, you know, you should skill yourself in, in digital technology, but also in, you know, how to control this, right? And this is a bit of a new skill, but yeah, you know, like, um, I think exciting to learn also. And actually, I see that we have a lot of young people working with us and, and also they, they really enjoy that. So I hope that others do this as well. Some wise and profound ideas there, Jerome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, also, we've been asking our guests about some of the challenges in the field of space restructures. What do you think are the most pressing challenges with respect to current global challenges in the field of spatial structures? Oh yeah, just limited to the to the to the to the spatial structures. Yeah, I I, I actually was thinking about this uh, also earlier on, but like I think the most pressing thing on my mind is not in our industry. Let, let's say the most pressing thing on my mind is actually we need peace. You know, like I, <laughs> uh, we are very in this in this place now that people are bombarding each other with 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 bombs and rockets, and I, I you know I I just cannot understand it. Can we just please be friends, right, and 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 work together to to make the world a better place than rather to kill each other? But but anyway, um, yeah. So, but that's I can I guess outside our domain. I think we have two big challenges ahead of us. So one I think is the environment, right, and as as I feel that as you know, architects, engineers, contractors, we have a huge responsibility. You know, I, I think everything that is gray in the world has been created somehow by, by us. Um, and, and, and everything that's green, we pushed away. Um, you know, we should, we should somehow make up for this, right? And, um, and figure out how we can build this into a, like a sustainable planet, right? And, and, and how, how our future bank can be sustainable. And I think this is like one of the biggest challenges out there um, that, that we need to do or need to address. The, the, the other thing that, that's on my mind is, is the workforce, right? I think in a lot of Western com uh, countries, the workforce is aging a lot, um, you know, and, 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 and actually technical people are getting uh, more and more scarce. So, um, you know, and, and, and I think to also address some of the other issues, we actually need to overcome this, uh, this somehow. And I hope a lot that digital technology will also help, help us there, you know, that we can just do more with less people. Um, and, um, and, and of course, then people can do other things as well, uh, still uh, that, that people are good at. So, um, yeah, hopefully that, that will also, um yeah address address some of that that uh, that issue great thanks drain some interesting ideas there and no doubt they will be uh discussed further at the 2021 conference itself um well jerome we've reached the end of our interview but it was a real pleasure to speak to you today and thank you very much for your time and indeed for your presentation 
Uh, for those watching the series, a reminder that registration for the 2021 conference is now open. Please head to the conference website for full details and information. And if you've enjoyed this video or indeed any in the Movers and Shakers interview series, please remember to like, share and comment. All of your views and thoughts are very welcome. Uh, but for now, Jerome, thank you very much for joining us today. And um, as we move ever closer to the 2021 conference, um, perhaps we'll get the opportunity to catch up with you again. But for now, thank you very much and speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.